Hey there. If you're thinking about getting out there on the road with the big rigs and driving a rig, an RV, or even a bus, then have we got great news for you. Southwest Truck Driver Training can get you trained and rolling in as little as four weeks. They offer lifetime job placement support. They have special military programs, a financial aid program, including grant applications, and so much more to offer you. Plus, they are family owned business right here in the southwest they have world-class training for class a and b cdls hazmat endorsement training rv training and of course a refresher course if you need one and did we mention they have three locations which are phoenix tucson and north las vegas so we don't know why you're sitting there channel surfing on a tv when you could be learning to drive and roll down the road to earning a great living today go to their website SWTDT.com to learn more about Southwest Truck Driver Training to shift your career into high gear. Tell them you heard about them on the 18 Wheel Talk podcast show. We love them. You will too. Psst. Hey, it's me, Patrick. Just wanted to remind you don't forget to go sign up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's 18wheeltalk.com forward slash YouTube. And get subscribed so that you can get our videos and see our videos and everything video. Later, taters. Break a one nine. Break one nine for radio check. 18 Wheels. Welcome to the 18 Wheel Talk podcast show. We're a podcast for truckers, about truckers, by truckers. Coaching generations of drivers while guiding them on their path to success. Fueling them with knowledge and passion for trucking. Navigating Navigating the the industry industry one one mile mile at a time. I'm ready. <laughs> Are you ready? Because yeah. we're recording right now. <laughs> Are we? Yeah. What? Welcome to the AD Wheel Dog Podcast. <laughs> you. Oh my God, I'm not ready. Welcome. <laughs> what are we talking about today, Janet? Well, I know we've been talking about a little bit of everything because we're for truckers and travelers and helping them live a healthier life behind the wheel. Yep. But today I want to talk about trucking and driver shortages and why it's happening. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, well, we help truckers and travelers. And today we're going to work on truckers. We're going to talk about trucking. Yeah. Wow, that sounded like a sick foghorn. Beep, beep. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no, Janet's using the city horn. I can't use it. I I don't know how to. There you go. Okay, so anyway. I don't know how to do an air horn. I'm yeah. sorry. What do you mean you don't know how to do an air horn? You're full of hair anyways. Full of hair? Air. You're full of hot air. I know you Bada are. Bump. I know you are. Wait a minute. Uh-huh. All right. So, before we, Patrick. Before we get into this, lower your microphone a little. You're uh-huh. too high. People want to see your beautiful no, face. So. That better? That's that's much better. Hey, beautiful. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. How are you? You can move. You know, you don't have to freeze face. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's kind of hard. I know, right? So, many people see trucking as a great opportunity. Okay. So they go and they get trained, either paying it their own way, mm-hmm. or you know, for a trucking school, or they go through and have a company pay them, um, or they go through a company school. Okay. Um, if they go through. A company school or the company pays for the schooling. They usually sign like a two-year contract. Okay. Where they have to work for the company for two years or they have to reimburse. Okay. Yeah. Well, I know I know. when I went to trucking school, they offered to reimburse for my schooling. Mm-hmm. However, the company I went, I had to have a 90 or above average. Okay. So... So I did. I did as good as I could. Okay. I, I forget. I think I had a ninety-six average. When That's I graduated. good. So I know that. So. Like my niece had to reimburse because she went through a company trucking school. Uh-huh. They paid for her schooling, mm-hmm. and she didn't stay with them. She switched companies. Right. So, so she's she has reimbursing. To, she has to pay that out of her pocket. Yeah, and this I know is... that nowadays schooling costs like ten to fifteen thousand dollars for trucking. Yeah. Back back when I went, I. I want to say I was probably six. Yeah. And I went through a refresher course, which was the same basic course, mm-hmm. in 2003 or four, something like it. 
Oh, I think it was three. A young, young time ago. Young, young time ago. Long, long time, time ago. ago. <laughs> I can still remember. Anyway, that's a different episode. <laughs> anyway, um, I actually got a grant. Okay, I, I got I got a student loan that wasn't a student loan. It was kind of it was a student slash personal loan. Okay, if that makes sense. Yeah. I don't know how it just made it made, it made interest rate was lower. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. So I, I didn't qualify because it was a trade school. Mm-hmm. I didn't qual I didn't qualify for any kind of grants. Oh, I got you. See, and for some reason, um, Hudson Valley Community College down in Hudson, mm-hmm. I went down there and saw what they had available and applied and went to a place in Albany. But then they informed me that I had a grant that I I was just applying for like a a part of it. Okay, they paid for the whole thing. Wow, you're lucky. I got real lucky, and I think you were. Yeah, I bet. I bet you it's a. You were a female, and B. B. You were a veteran. Yep, that's why. Mm -hmm. They had different programs, and between the two programs, they paid for both. (sighs) You veterans just get it all. Yeah, we get screwed by the government, and then yeah. we get all the benefits that we can apply for, and we have to know exactly. what to apply for. And you got to apply for it, because if you don't apply for it, you don't get it. That's right. So anyway. Just saying. So you have to get trained to be a truck driver. It costs, Whoa. Wait a minute. What do you mean you got to get trained? Well, it used to be you could just have your dad or a friend train you and sit go down get there, your you, you All you had to do was sit on your dad's lap, and he'd show you how to drive, and that was it. Here, Janet, you turn the wheel. Well, and well here's, that's, here's basically how you how you, that's basically how you learn. Yeah, and here's how you shift. Yep. Okay? Yep, that's how I learned. Well, I didn't learn sitting on your dad's lap. I, I'm glad I'm to say it. I'm just saying. Because <laughs> if you did that, just then Just in case good anybody was trick. wondering. Um, yeah, no. So it used to be you could learn from a friend or a family member and get your license. Mm-hmm. Then it switched to you have to go to schooling. I didn't have like a family or friend that was in trucking. I, I, I think... That I'm the only one in my family mm-hmm. that ever drove a truck, oh, wow. a big rig. I I don't believe any of my uncles, grandparents, or anybody like that that drove truck. I, I me, I, I'm the only one. You're special in a very good way, I guess. Yeah, that guy. Ain't. We wouldn't have met if it hadn't been for that. True. It's one thing we got in common. Yes. So anyway, uh-huh, that, so, that one moment on the bridge. Uh, yes, the moment on the bridge. Yeah. So a few months after, I'd training, like to tell you what Janet said about that moment on the bridge. However, it's X-rated. No, it's not. <laughs> I told your sister, just give me this guy five minutes in my truck. It's just, I just want him five minutes in the truck. Ooh, that's my brother. Oh my god, you! And anyway. he's married. Yes. <laughs> and I just went, oh well. <laughs> What do you so, mean he's married? Uh huh. So, I know, right? That was then. This is now. Moving <laughs> on, back to trucking. <laughs> anyway, back to the trucking. A few months after training into the first OTR job, most of these drivers, after they, because you go through schooling, yep. Then you go and you sit, sit in a truck with a trainer. Yeah. The way it's supposed to work is, say, their first week or so, you sit in the jump seat, which is the passenger seat for those that don't know it. Okay. And then the trainer drives, and yep. then you switch. And the trainer is supposed to be awake and coherent. You work on their – they're supposed to work – They're supposed to help you. You're supposed to work their hours. Now, when I was training with my trainer, okay, mm-hmm. he, had, he, had, he had two of us in the okay. truck. So we were, we were bringing – one of the trainers is being brought to – his actual trainer, well, okay. one of the, one of the, one of the trainees. I was one, and then the other guy was going to. Uh, he was just catching a ride. Okay. So my trainer utilized both of us to kind of get the feel. Okay. Um. So we had us each drive for a couple of hours just to get an idea as to how you know how we can handle the rig. I got gotcha. you. And then he took over basically. So my first job out of school. Was hazmat gas and oil? My first, my first job out of school was flatbed hauling a forty-eight thousand pound coil loaded suicide. Lucky you, my and, was- and and if you if, for those of you that don't know, there's two ways to load a, a, a coil. All right, there's there's shotgun where if the chain breaks, the coil would roll off the sides of the um 
trailer. Trailer, yep. And then there's suicide, suicide. where if the chains break, uh, it's going to roll over the cab of the truck. Or the back. Or the back of the truck. So you made sure that it was secure. Suicide is usually the best way to haul a coil. Mm -hmm. However, I have loaded them. Both ways. Shotgun. The, The wind drag is really bad. Yes, it is. You know, but if they're small enough and they're, and they're behind the cab, then it's not so bad. And if you're tarping it anyways, that usually takes takes away some of the wind resistance. Yep. So I hauled fuel to gas stations, which the you tankers. Know, I, I, I always, I'm sorry, I always wanted to do that. Oh, okay. The tankers have bladders in them. Bladders or baffles? Baffles, <laughs> I meant. I knew, I, I, well, well, I've heard of tankers They've, that have bladders in them. So that each one is separate. Yeah, they have they have compartments. Yes, that's the best way to describe it. So that each okay. one is separate. So if you've got unleaded, premium, and right. mid grade, they're they have, each in their own compartment. Gotcha. Okay, that's how they can keep it separate. Some people think it's all just one big thing. It's not. Okay. Right. And you can have diesel in the same tanker as all the others. Right. Like the different compartments. Usually, different if we hauled the fuels. truck stops, all we hauled was diesel. Okay, yeah. And then, I hauled, then, then there's no compartment. And I hauled overload six oil to factories that's like heating oil. Okay. Extra heavy, 120,000 pounds. Yeah. And you got a lot of times like a three axle. You need special permits for that, right? You need special permits. And, now, and I hauled now, them up the mountain up into uh, New Hampshire. Now, when you, when you did that, did you have um, like a certain route that you had to go? Like, like there was a specific, yes, you yes, got the I permit, had to stay but you, on had, specific routes. you had to take certain roads to get to where you're going. Correct. Okay. That, but that, I, what I started to say is I had one trainer, Dan, that taught me uh, gas and oil or gas and diesel. Okay. And I had another trainer, Steve, you've heard me talk about Peterson. Yeah. Um, he's the one that taught me six oil. Okay. So I had two different trainers because each one was the best with that company at what they did. At what they do. Yeah. That makes sense. Steve didn't hog. Gas for the most part, and Dan, I don't Didn't think he all, ever did, hauled six oil. You know, and and that's two different. They that's, each that's, had their own rig. They I rode uh, one day with each of them. Well, where well, they drove, and then I swapped. Well, it being that all right, tankers and, and loading tankers, a whole different story because you had to load your own. But it being tankers, and now you're you you're you're hauling liquid. Ga- you're hauling gasoline, mm-hmm. which they have their own compartments. Yep. All right. Gasoline has a different thickness. Correct. Than the oil. Oh, gosh. And, yes. and the oil isn't in compartments. The oil's in its own thing. Oh, uh, yeah. Now, did the oil have baffles in it? Nope. Because I know, like, milk trucks will put baffles in it no, to, the oil to allow had, the slosh. No, the oil has no baffles. And if you hauled so many gallons to one place and so many gallons to another, which was really rare, it was usually one load, one stop. Right. And it was usually like 300 miles out and all uphill. Of course. Like to Ticonderoga. Yeah. All uphill. Up to tiny. Yeah. Uphill loaded, <laughs> downhill empty in the winter. <laughs> uh-huh. um, that, but that, if that, say you had... In, that, that, that me saying tiny is an inside joke. Yes. Um, <laughs> it's a dirty joke. Anyway... Um, I forgot what I was saying, Patrick. We'll, we'll hold that for the X-rated show. Sorry. What was I saying? You were hauling if you had, oil. if I had two stops, there was meters that would tell me when I had reached the correct amount of gallons. All right. Yeah. So, but that, that make, was that, that makes sense. That was really rare. So, you, so you'd have a meter on uh, as you were exhausting yes, the as oil, I was taking it out, and then you had to empty the hoses out a specific way to get them totally empty. Because you had to wrap those hoses back up onto the trailer, up on the truck, yeah. and the empty hose weighed over a hundred pounds. Yeah, that's whew. which I could do, but there's a specific way to yeah, do it without killing you. Yeah. So and anyway, that's, and that's why you went with two different trainers that were best at what fitted. they did. Yeah, exactly. So you had to pay attention to your trainers. So it's not until drivers that are new get out of that training that they realize how difficult. The job yep. is, or like in my case, how much they loved the job. I loved truck driving so like there I. was no tomorrow. See, what it it took for me when I got out uh, of training, my trainer said, you know what, dude, you got this. Mm-hmm. And I went through my company's training facility. Mm-hmm. 
And out of all the, there, there, there was like a drive around the building and pull up and then back it into the building, you know, get out, walk around, yada, 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 yeah. yada. 20 people went before me. Mm-hmm. And then I went and I pulled up and I got out and walked around. And then I got in and I laid on the air horn and then I backed up. Mm-hmm. And then when I got in there, they, they, they brought me out and like, and now, now I'm the center of attention. And I was told, this is the, out of the out of the last twenty one people. This is the only guy that did it right. You laid on the air horn, exactly. Yeah, because the first thing he said to me he says, "Why did you do that?" I said, "Well, contrary to me walking around the truck, I know that some idiot could end up behind me, and by me blowing my air horn, it at least brings the attention to me for one." Mm-hmm. And and then when I back up, they they at least know what what the hell direction I'm going. I hit the air horn, and it's like they see the flashers, and now I'm moving backwards. They know get the hell out of my way. Yeah, because so, I went to an independent school. On lunch breaks, I would spend the time in the Albany, New York phone book. Okay, I started with the A's, and I called every trucking company in the phone book, uh-huh. and asked them, "Do you hire drivers straight out of school?" What they say? No. <laughs> They're like, yeah. Talk to me in a year or two. It's like, yeah, no. And then I talked to one, and they said, "Well, maybe. Tell me about yourself." And I did. And then I, the like, a Saturday, I went in and I talked to the general manager, Willie. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I talked to him and just did an interview. No driving. I wasn't even out of school yet. Right. I just talked to him, and he said. You pass the school, come and see me. You get your license, come and see me. I'll give you a chance. He says, you're more confident than anybody I've ever met. Stay with us. We'll be right back. If you don't have a dash cam in your semi and you went and spent all that money on it, do you really think that you and your truck are protected against John Q. Public? We don't. That is why we recommend Rexing USA cameras and equipment. Whatever it is you are looking for, whether it be a dash cam, a body cam, a trail cam, or similar, they probably have it. Nearly every new vehicle coming out has a dash cam, and there is a reason for it. Litigation. Yes, welcome to America, the land of litigation. So the best thing you can do is to protect what you own with video and pictures. And their dash cams, boy, let me tell you, their cams do a lot. They have 170-degree ultra-wide-angle lenses that will automatically lock in the last video if it feels a vibration from an accident. It has a super-capacitor battery backup that is better than lithium for extreme heat or cold. Add in loop recording, a mobile app, and parking monitoring, and more. And yes, now you have a really great package for this company of cameras. So come on, check it out at 18wheeltalk.com slash dash cam. That's 18wheeltalk.com slash dash cam. Right. And that's how I was. I was more confident after that, you know, yeah. than, so when I went and did my first on my own, Mm-hmm. I had two two stops. Okay. The first stop was a parallel dock. I had to pull up and back up parallel to the dock. Yeah. And I had to get as close as I could so they can bring this overhead crane. And that's the only thing I liked about flatbed is is I didn't have to offload it. Yeah. It, it either had to be forklift, craned, or shoved off the you know the tail of the truck. I you got know? you. So- I didn't have to touch. I didn't have to touch the freight other than to put put the chains and the straps on and, and throw the tarp. That was it. <laughs> so when I went for my road test, uh, Willie's brother, Mike, road tested me. Okay. As I started to get out of the Port of Rensselaer, he said, you might as well turn around. And I thought, I'm that bad? And he says, and I said that to him. He says, no, you're that good. He says, you got the job. So when I was Whoa. done training gas with Dan, I knew I was done when I came back. He had me loading by myself across the street. There was one of the places we loaded gas, okay. fuel. Yep. And one time I came back and he says, you're good to go. And I said, okay. He says, no, you're done training with me. Now you move on to six oil. And I said, why? And he says, because I watched you load from here. Because you could see 
the place we loaded. Right, right, right. Yeah. And he says, he says it was snap, snap, snap. You knew exactly what you were doing, and that was the only thing I had yet to see you be comfortable with. Oh, cool. All right. And saw him all the time at the stops, at the you know <laughs> depot. I saw him all the time at, on the road. No, I felt really good about it. I wasn't big headed <laughs> because I still had to train six oil. I know. I know. So then I got in the truck with Steve, and I was in the truck with Steve for a couple weeks. So my training, I had two weeks with Dan and uh-huh. about two weeks with Steve. Okay. So I was coming through uh, the college town in in Massachusetts. There. Um. Uh. Yeah, I know where. Anyway. Coming, North, North Adams, Mass. Yes, North Adams, coming through the college, and kids were darting back and forth, not in the crosswalk, and I was being real patient all the time and stopping and going and yeah, stuff. Yeah, they don't look. And then one day, I was just fed up with it. They were not in the—the the ones that were in the crosswalk, I stopped really patiently for. And then all these kids just start in the middle of the block going in front of me. I laid on the air horn. It was in the summer. Had my window down. Leaned out the window and screamed at him, get the blank out of my way or I'll run your ass over. And they scrammed. You probably you probably even said it just like that. Get no. the blank out of my way. No, I swore at him. Well, would you swear at him? Get the F out of my way. You said that. Get the F out of my way. No, and I'm not going to say it, so behave. Ah, come on, we're explicit. You could do it. <sighs> You're explicit. Anyway, and... Steve Wait started. Steve started <laughs> laughing, uh-huh. and when we got back to the terminal, he says, "Okay, she's ready." And I looked at him. He says, "When you cussed at those kids and you'd had enough, that's how I knew." I was like, "Okay." Oh, <laughs> okay. I'm like, "That's all it took out of Custer last week." <laughs> uh, yeah, right. I had done that three days ago. <laughs> yeah, right. So, <laughs> anyway, so kids. We're talking about how difficult truck driving can be. And you, when you're out of training, you have to get to that point where you're comfortable. Yeah. And kids now, or new drivers, don't really understand the mental, physical, and emotional side of driving, especially if they have a family at home. Right. And kids do not understand the parent being gone for weeks on end. But if you're a driver and you've got children at home and you want to make the money, you're going to be an over-the-road driver. You're not really going to make tons of money I'm sitting guilty of it. being a daytime driver, no. you know, home every night. If you make your home life your priority, you're not going to make that money. It's That's like, one of the problems in truck driving. It's like, look, I, we got to pay the bill somehow, and this is what I know how to do, and you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make the money to pay the bills. So you either either work a ton of driver, ton of hours on a day job where you're at home most nights. Or you go over the road and you're home on weekends every couple weekends. My weekend consisted of Saturday evening and then I left out Sunday evening. That was my weekend. I was home every other weekend. You know, but I was on a region. I was on a regional board where I was cross country. You were coast to coast. Yeah, I was like home every second or third weekend, and I didn't care because my dog went with me, and I didn't have a husband or kids. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah, when I started, it was it was I had to go to Oklahoma to pick up my truck. Mm-hmm. And then my first delivery was in Kansas, and they worked me back over to the East Coast because obviously I lived in New York. Yeah, so after, and I ran the North Northeast Regional Board. Yeah, so after I ran fuel, I switched to over the road because that's what I really wanted to do. But I appreciated the opportunity that Willie gave me that I stuck with them until he left the company. And that's when I said I I met the new manager, didn't like him, and some friends like Steve had gone to this other company for over the road. I went and interviewed with him and they bought a truck for me to drive. And that's what I did. They said, Hey, we'll buy you a truck. He, he let me pick it out even. What? Yeah. He, he took me to the Peter ship. And you didn't Peter call, you didn't call me and say, Hey, I got a friend that could probably use a job. Uh, you weren't interested in anything I ever showed you. You, you. you didn't know. You didn't ask. Did I know you then? No, I didn't I know you then. Didn't. You worked for Beeline. But when I worked for them, I did when I first started. I didn't know you. No, but when you met me, you could have said, "Hey, you interested in driving?" Uh, anyway. So I then might have, the, I might have jumped all over you. I mean, all over that. <laughs> so let's get back to this. So we're talking about trucking in the shortage. I gave you five minutes. Then you never know. <laughs> we're talking about the trucking shortage. Sorry, we got oh, sidetracked. Yeah. My, my bad. There's the point of view of the trucking company. We are reminiscing. These big companies are willing to train the new people to drive, but then they wonder why the then people wonder why they pay so low to begin with. Okay. 
The reason is it seems to be that so many new drivers leave after six months. They get on their, you know, they get behind the wheel on their own. They're gone from home. They're learning more about driving, breakdown, hours of service, splitting the sleeper. And mm. they find out that driving a truck's a hard job. It's well, not yeah. just pull, drive down the road in a car and stop in a town and done. It's, 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 a, it's, it's work. It's not marshmallows and rainbows. So it's, then they go find a job working for a smaller company or a place like Amazon or UPS because they've got their CDL. They can drive for small companies or... A local delivery but, company like that. Yeah, but what they don't understand mm-hmm. is those companies, they don't need a CDL to drive. I know, but they're trying to make use of the fact that they've learned how to drive. Oh, yeah, yeah, I get it. You know, and... It's like my my old company. It's like they made the weight of the truck under 26,000 pounds, even though it still had air brakes. Yeah. You still drive it with a regular driver's license. Yeah, and I don't understand how you didn't need an air brake permit. You need a... Uh, that's what I'm saying. It has air brakes. You need at least an air brake endorsement. Yeah. So, because they changed it to an air brake endorsement. Yeah. That's how much that's how much this the it's wolf changed. Just changed. Oh my God. Anyway. Anyways. So when the drivers stay six months with that company they trained for and leave, first they have to pay that loan back. And that leaves the big company out in the cold with the driver that they paid to train and left the company. Yep. So yeah, I'm sure they send these kids or people a bill, but then they have to probably take them to court to yeah. get the money back because they're yeah, going they, into they collection. End up, they end up getting, you know, let it go to it ends up in collections, and and by they're by that left- time that company runs out of business because they got no money now. Yeah, especially they if it's a bankrupt. smaller company. Yeah. Okay, so you've got that. That's and, why the smaller companies don't take kids right out of school. And then you got the really big companies, mm-hmm. the really good ones that do pay well, that do have ex extremely well uh, pay and great benefits, but you can't walk into those jobs straight out of school. And that's what these new drivers don't understand. You can't just go to school for four weeks and walk up to Usually it's six, six to eight. Or six weeks. Okay, I don't know. Anyway, sorry. You can't. You choked me up. I'm sorry. My my apologies. You can't go to school for four, six, eight weeks, whatever it is. Mm Mm-hmm. And then expect to go get a job making a hundred, hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year. What? It's with- not automatic. Are you kidding me? They told me that if I went to school, that I was going to make a hundred to hundred twenty thousand dollars a year. They lied. You I have know, to right? Your, they you have do. To do your dues. Yeah, you got to put your time in. That's right. See how I segued that? I do. You have to do your time. <laughs> you have to. See, you think I'm not paying attention? Well, I thought you were just trying to make me choke. No, I wasn't. I was trying to help you out. Oh, okay. So we spoke to drivers, and we found out that in one aspect, nothing's changed in truck driving. Mm -hmm. But in another aspect, a lot has changed. (sighs) You know? Believe me, I've seen the change. Imagine the changes my dad saw. Oh, I'm I'm sure he saw the the bulk of it when— when they change things around and, and a lot of the older drivers that I've ever talked to have, I've always said, all right, some of it makes sense. Yes. The rest of it makes no sense. Yeah. You know, I mean, there, there's like certain things like the hours of service. I understand that, you know, work so many hours, be off for so many hours that allows us to get our rest. Correct. I get it. 14 hours on, 10 hours off. It's only 24 hours in a day. The days aren't getting yeah, any longer. 16, if there was a traffic accident or you were stuck for a reason. You you, you, you could ha- use that yeah, once you, a week. You had you had an allotment to get to a safe haven, they call Correct. it. Correct. You know, bad weather, bad accident. It yeah. wasn't it wasn't a two hour window for you. Well, I'm almost home. No, it no, was no, a it was like a, I said, behind an accident, bad weather, whatever. You had a two hours you could use once a week for something that like that. Yes. Um but I started to say is he was born in twenty seven, nineteen twenty seven. Yeah. And he started driving when he was fourteen years old. Yeah, that was I mean, that was back when you were you when you were driving a truck, you were sitting on a bucket. Yeah, and it took pretty much, and, and he it had took four, three, three stick shifts. <laughs> yeah, and it took him a day to drive from Springfield, Illinois, to St. Louis, Missouri. Yep, and then unload. It took him all weekend to go from Springfield to St. Louis and back to make like four bucks yep. or two bucks or hauling something. pigs. I think hauling he said. pigs. Yeah, he hauled hogs. His first job. 
He was a hogger. He, he made diddly squat, I believe is what he said. Yep. He made, so, no, no. I believe his exact words were, he made pig shit. I don't think my dad says shit. I believe he said the word shit. Okay, so anyway. Diddly shit. He didn't make diddly shit. So, see, the I, government. See how I did that? I, I got do. all those swear words in on our explicit show. Okay. <laughs> Driver, the government used to be pretty lax about hours of service. They didn't do a lot of checking on it. Okay. And there was a lot of falling asleep behind the wheel. Yeah, I've seen um, a few wrecks where you know that driver fell asleep. asleep. behind the wheel, yeah. And then as time changed and hours of service did, employers didn't really seem to. Employers, you know, especially paper logs. Yep. Um, which have pretty much gone away. Yeah, oh, they have. They, they pretty yeah. much have. Um. Even like 15 years ago, a lot of drivers knew how to do two, three, even four books to make so they could run more hours and keep the company happy. Yeah. I can't even count the number of times a boss would say to me or a dispatcher, well, I know you're out of hours, but if you could just do this, I'll give you this bonus. And then I'd say, text it to me so I have it in writing Mm -hmm. that you need this load done and I'm going to get this bonus Uh and I'll make it work. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out on paper, which was my way of saying, I'll run a second book. I'll fudge the numbers. You just got to give me the numbers to fudge. But I want it in writing that I'm going to get a bonus for doing that because I'm the one that pays if I get caught. Stay with us. We'll be right back. So you say you like tools. Now, are we talking about normal people like them or Tim the Toolman Taylor like them? Because if you're like the two of us, it is definitely in the Tim the Toolman Taylor's range. I have never been bored when shopping for tools. So here's what you do. Head on over to 18wheeltalk.com slash jbtools. It will take you to their site, which will normally give you a discount, a chance in a giveaway, join the rewards club, or something really great like that. Then start browsing to your heart's delight. Whether you're looking for power tools, hand tools, 25-ton jack stands, Or gardening tools, they have got you covered. So take a few minutes to follow the link. 18wheeltalk.com slash jbtools and jewel over a few tools while you're there. Yeah, see, I always got, like, I got a little extra if I, like, you know, preloaded a bunch of trailers for them. Like, if I was at at a terminal Mm -hmm. and they were like, hey, Pat, uh, when you head now, you know, I'm like, well, I'm still in the sleeper for a couple hours <laughs> you know it's, hey you want to do me a favor can you, can you can you get these two you know i got i got two appointments it should take you know 15 minutes in between can you can you get these trailers preloaded yeah what are you gonna pay me you know i've never had to do that <laughs> I I didn't mind because yeah. I knew the guys at at the the plant that literally it was a mile down the road mm-hmm Give them the appointment number, pull in. They had the stuff ready. I mean, it was literally right there. It was like, grab it, drop it on there. It was a load of pipe. Okay. It was a pipe factory. And and I would adjust the, the um, I call it the blocks. Okay. I, I'd adjust yeah. the blocks, throw at least three straps over the so that I could drive it back to the yard. Yeah. I That's all you. I had to do, you know? Okay, so so I made I made a few extra bucks doing that. That's how I made my extra. I got you. So hours of service came around in around nineteen thirty five. Nineteen thirty five. I was amazed when I saw that. I'm like, they didn't That's start crazy. enforcing it in nineteen thirty five. You know, that, back yeah. Go ahead. You could drive twelve hours in a fifteen hour period and have nine hours of rest, as long as you took three breaks. One break being that nine hours. Three hours of breaks. No, three breaks. It says three Three hours hours of breaks. Okay, sorry. Within a 24-hour period. Yeah. So you had to be nine. Let's do the math here. So you could drive 12 hours. That might be a typo. I think it was three breaks. Plus nine is 21, plus three three is 24. 24. No, that's right. Okay. So they could drive 12 hours in a 15-hour period. Yes, and within that 15 hours, they need to take three hours of breaks. Yes. There's their three hours of breaks. Plus so, the so nine 15 off. plus 
15 plus the 9 is but, 24 hours. Yeah, but... So that makes sense. From what my dad told me, they could do the 12, take the 3 and count it as part of the 9 so that they could roll it over quicker. So the 15, the 12 plus 9... Mm-hmm. It's 21 hours. 21, and they could roll it at 21. Okay. Because they didn't take a break during their nine. Yeah, I get it. So it counted. It was really it was, weird. Yeah, there, there's there, they, there they was roll. weird like yeah. other rules written in that if you do this, you could do that. If you do this, you could do yeah. that. But that Even, also established the 60-hour in seven days rule. Yeah. Or, that or, stuck around. Yeah. The, yeah. The, oh, oh, yes. Yeah. 60 hours, seven days, 70 hours, eight, eight days. days. Yeah. That, that, that all depended on... Whether you're local or long distance. Yes. But then there was also the rotating 15-hour day. Okay. uh, That was added in 1962. That was drive 10 in a 15 hours, eight off. Yep. Yep. Like I said, they they changed that. You needed an eight-hour off. Yes. When I started working for my last company, that, that rule was in effect. Yeah, I think that's the one I drove on. It's just like I did it, so much research, my brain just got it fried. It seemed like every time I blinked, I was at work, yeah, doing you know covering for somebody. It seemed that I'm way. like I'm like I just left here. Well, I still need you to work. I'm like, so, but I just left. Can I sleep? <laughs> here's what's weird. In 1935, they came up with the rules, mm-hmm. but in 1938 is when they were required to start reporting their hours. So they had the rules, but three years later they said, "Oh, we've got these yeah. rules. Hey, hey, we need you to record we need you them to now. write them down." Write so them that's down. that's when the paper logs, which they used to call comic books, yep. and I remember because, my grandpa McHugh calling them that. I remember hearing some of the old guys. Oh, you mean that comic book? Yeah, I used to write comic books. My grandpa would say, yep. and that's what he was talking about. When I was little, I didn't know what he was talking about, and then I'm like, ah, because because it was. Because that's what it. That's all it was. That's all it was. It was. It was a funny comic strip that they'd write at the end with, of the a, week, not at the end of the day. With a bunch of lines written in it. At the end of the week, they'd fill them out and hand them in. Yep. The comic book. Yeah, isn't that funny? Now fast forward to 2016. What happened then? They came out with the electronic log book. I didn't have to deal with that. I, I did in a way. Okay. I didn't have to personally log in and out of a digital. Can you cheat with it? I don't think so. I okay. Like I said, I don't know the ins and outs of it. But it, it, it was supposed to take away from the cheating. Okay. Okay. Can so. you still use paper? <laughs> it, I, th- I think... You could still run a paper log depending on the year of the vehicle. Okay. If that makes sense. Okay, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. You know, so if it's older than a 2000, mm-hmm. then then I think you could still use, you are allowed to use paper logs. I think logs. it's the engine, though. I think you're right. Because it would be the engine that controls the electronics, not the vehicle. So if, say you had a 2002 or three, and you put a... 2000 or a 99 engine in what well, i don't know why you'd do that but if you did well it, you'd do it to avoid the it, electronic it, logs it, yeah it, yeah well, that's what i would do i would do it to <laughs> avoid the electronic logs but if if it's a created motor yeah you know but i know one person that still runs paper logs i even when we had electronic logs we some some of the guys would run paper logs no, still just, yeah but i'm just saying he doesn't have the, an electronic log in his in his truck but those electronic logs never screw up. Yeah, right. Ever. I remember because our our scanners mm-hmm. basically kept track of our hours. So if you forgot to log off the scanner, you couldn't work the next. You know, technically, couldn't you wouldn't have hours and couldn't work the next day. Okay, so your scanner kind of was your electronic log. Yeah. All I know is everything I've heard is electronic logs cause arguments with your employers. Oh, always, always. Because they want you to do more. But you can't. But you can't. Yeah. Don't have the hours. So. That's not my fault. According to the American Trucking Association. Okay. um, The driver shortage Uh is reported at 80,000 drivers last year. And they. That would be. 2021. 21. 
Correct. Okay. And they say that in the next eight years, by 2030, okay. it will double to 160,000. Shortage. Shortage. No, it's, we're, right now, we're currently 80,000 truck drivers short. Correct. To be fully a uh, fully efficient Correct. country. To be an efficient country with truck drivers and transportation industry of hauling goods. Okay. We need 80,000 more drivers right now. So by 2030, they're going to say it's going to be doubled. Doubled, correct. I, I, I agree. Because, um, because of the way the, regula- the, the regulations are changing so much mm-hmm. that they're, if they just allow the drivers you know, come up with a set of rules and leave that the set of rules and quit fucking with them and let the drivers do their job, Stay with us. We'll be right back. Driver, if you haven't tried any of Mother Trucker Yoga's products, have we got news for you. The news is you are missing out on some great products that really do work. So, you're probably sore from a long day and just don't know where to even start looking, right? Well, driver, stop right there. You don't have to wonder anymore. These products were all designed with the professional truck driver in mind. And... The Stiff Mother Trucker Pain Relief Cream is 100% natural, as in all the junk that you don't need on your body is not in it. It is paraben-free, gluten-free, sulfate-free, and artificial dye-free. Probably made right here in the USA, road-tested, trucker-approved. It relieves sore muscles, soothes pain and inflammation from bee stings and insect bites, It calms that back pain from driving those long, hard roads, helps alleviate foot pain, helps reduce wrist pain, elbow pain, and stiffness in the neck and shoulders from poor sleep or overuse. In other words, if your body is feeling bruised and bumped up from that ever-intensive truck driver life, then Stiff Mother Trucker Pain Relief Cream is the answer to what you are asking. Just ask the crew at A&E Shipping Wars. They will let you know. So, go to 18wheeltalk.com slash resources and look for Mother Trucker Yoga to find this and many more great products. But here's the thing. There's You're, almost 2 million licensed CDL drivers in the U.S. I, I'm one of them. I'm one of them. You still have a CDL? Well, it actually just expired. But, oh, okay. but I had it for how many years after I quit, you know? I, yeah. I, well, it wouldn't take much for me to get it back, but my point is, how I, many drivers are out there that have a CDL that don't use it? A lot. I have one. I was one until recently. You know, I still have one. All I gotta, oh. all I got to do is get a DOT physical, and I'm good to go. Oh, they say that this. Now, here's what's weird. They say that it's supposed to reach 160 thousand by 2030, but then they also say it's supposed to reach 240 thousand by this year. One of the num- I think it's one point one million six hundred thousand by twenty thirty. Yeah, by twenty thirty, it's one million six hundred thousand, and it's two hundred and forty thousand this year, which is a forty percent shortage. Oh, There's- I got you. Yeah, 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 sorry, my bad. The shortage is expected to rise to two hundred forty this year. Yeah, which is almost over. We're at two hundred. That might have been twenty twenty. No. No. Oh, okay. In 2020, there were over almost 2 million heavy and tractor-trailer drivers. Okay. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Okay. Um, But then you find out that things aren't really running smoothly and haven't been for decades. This is true. Um, There's excellent jobs and there's terrible jobs. And that's why they say there's going to be a 40% shortage or was this year. Okay. And a lot of it has to do with driver compensation. Well, that and, and, and you throw in, you know, Hello, we're a, a pandemic swooped in in 2019. Yeah, you know, so you throw that into the mix where where merchandise isn't being produced because people are in a lockdown, aren't shopping, aren't doing this, aren't going. Well, there's nobody to drive the boats, the trucks, the trains, and the trucks are sitting in ports waiting to get loaded, exactly, lined because, up bumper to bumper because because the boats are stuck out in the harbor for miles, shits and giggles. Yeah. You know, for whatever God okay. knows reason. So, so I mean, like I said, you throw all that in. Well, uh, yeah, there's going to be a shortage. Of course, there's going to be a shortage. Now they're trying to they're they're trying to you know make it so that 
They're, they're changing the age. Yeah. Well, yeah, they're changing the age and they're telling these kids are going to make a hundred to $120,000 when actually 48,000 is the average for a beginner, for a beginner. No, that's the median annual pay. That's oh yeah. Not yeah, beginner. Yeah, yeah. That's 23 bucks an hour. It's going up, but that's $23 an hour for median pay. Yeah. That's just, I made a lot more than that when I was over the road, but I was experienced too. I, I made, I made, I didn't make, I, I wasn't getting rich, but, yeah. but I wasn't, but I was I also wasn't poor either. I, I by no means wasn't poor, but on one hand I was single. Okay. Okay. Didn't have a lot of bills of my own, mm-hmm. but on the other hand, I was supporting my sister and her children. Gotcha. So. Yeah, I, I had. Apples to pineapples. Uh, right. I had. Uh, I was married with children and one on the way. Did the you time. sell shoes? No. No, love I drove a truck. Love and marriage, love and <laughs> No, I drove a truck. <laughs> Go together like a horse and carriage. Yeah. Anyways. Okay, anyway. So most, there's a lot of drivers that don't get any overtime, don't have health care, and they pay their own fuel, and they spend days and weeks away from home. Mm-hmm. And if they do have benefits, the benefits suck. True. You know? Um, Bring in the Teamsters. Well, and the and it's like, okay, well, say they don't have to pay their fuel, they have to pay their parking. You know, because a lot of these truck stops well, you nowadays. have to pay for parking now. Yeah, nowadays, yeah. Before, and, you didn't have to. You just, well, I know, but I remember paying for parking at a TA just inside Pennsylvania um, coming out of Jersey. Yep. I was like, you got to be freaking That was cute. like one of the ones. But that, that was a big one, though. It was. They got a lot of traffic. But uh, they also, you, with, with you had to paying, spend so much in fuel or food. With paying for the parking, though, that also included uh, 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 like a cable hookup. But you you had to either pay for fuel or food to get your parking for free. Yeah. You gave them your receipts, showed them your receipts when you left, and then they'd give you the free parking. If you didn't spend so much money on either of those, you had to pay yep. when you left. And getting a scale wasn't enough. No, you had to eat a decent meal. What I mean by that is using the the the, the cat, cat scale, scale to weigh your for vehicle. twelve bucks. It used to be back then. Yeah, now God, I, I, I think it's twenty bucks now. Probably twenty five. I don't know. Anyway, it's ridiculous. roll up on a scale. Come on. But companies don't reimburse for parking like that. Nope, not anymore. They're not going to reimburse your meals. Nope. Um, we have a podcast talking about how to eat healthy in a truck, don't we? Meals in trucks, or is that still coming? I, we got something out there, and so. whatever it is, guess what? We'll put There'll a be link. a link in the show notes. I know uh, Janet's <laughs> going to make a note about that. Link in the show notes. Uh, I think it's called healthy eating. I just put the word food. Yeah, I think it's healthy eating. So anyway, something like that. Um, so there's all these issues that drivers have when they're on the road. Mm-hmm. They're being promised big money. They're not going to make the big money, and like you said, bring in the Teamsters. Okay, they drive for major carriers. They make what, eighty thousand plus? Yeah. Now, 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 the teams just come in. They say, you know, better pay, better benefits. You, you know, uh, so so now the instead of forty eight thousand, you got the teamsters in here. Now you're going to make eighty thousand plus health care, overtime, and other perks. Okay. You know, better pay, better hours, better benefits. Okay. I'd go there. Home at night. Yeah. You know, I, I would I would jump on a union shop. Yeah. Well, and the other good one is Walmart. Okay. Walmart raised their... I know Walmart raised their pay. 21% salary bump. Yeah. So that their average starting pay for drivers, not for employees in the stores, driver salary start at 87000 And in their first year... Oh, 87 was their first to starting. This is for experienced drivers. They used to start their drivers at 87,000. They bumped it up to 110,000. Now, you can't come straight out of school and make that, but you can still make that as a first year driver with Walmart. Right. They have more than possible. Yes. It's not a guarantee. It's possible. But they um they aim to hire over 5,000 drivers is what they were saying for the year we're in. Yep. 
which included training 400 to 800 new drivers through their private fleet development. I didn't even know Walmart trained drivers. Well, I mean, if you got somebody that works for the company mm-hmm. and then wants to drive, yeah. they, they find out that they can get in. That, that Wal- it benefits Walmart for them to train their own people. Oh, yeah. But I like I said, I didn't know they had a driver training program. Oh, yeah. It's like it's like there's a few people that 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 I work with that that have talked about, you know, getting into. You know, why don't you drive? I said, I said, dude, let me tell you something. I drove 32 years. I don't need to drive. I don't need to drive no more. Mm-hmm. I mean, granted, they're automatic, so it'd be a whole lot easier. But I I like the hours that I work. Mm-hmm. I like seeing the sun. I mm-hmm. don't want to work nights. I did 32 years at uh, 36 years at night. I, I 36 years at night work. Drove 32 of those. You know, I, I, I don't, you. I don't need it no more. But there are some that, where, where I tell them, "Hey, go talk to so and so. They may have a, you know, they may be able to help you pay for schooling, or they may help you with training." Yeah, and the fact that you're not driving brings us to driver retention. You know, they don't talk. To, they, they don't. They don't listen. Goddamn kids! Mm-hmm. Don't freaking listen. Anyways, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to no, sidetrack. If I was sidetracking, driver retention. Besides pay, there's a huge demand for training. Yep. Fleets that didn't used to train or they quit training, they brought back the programs. Well, yeah, because you want to keep your you, – it benefits a company to keep somebody that's already been there. Mm-hmm. I mean, yes, I know. I work for those those companies where bring in the younger blood mm-hmm. because they can pay them less. Because they don't know any better. Yeah. But then, then you get those old timers chirping in the young kids' ears <laughs> and telling them, to, <laughs> don't do it. Yeah. Put your foot down. Demand you want more money. Yeah. More money, better benefits. Well, Tell and the way to, to bring make in the union. You know, the way to make more money as a truck driver. <laughs> What's that? Drive team. This is true because. Twice the amount of work in the same five day period. If yep. you're working five days a week, exactly. the The wheels on the bus don't stop. You're saying they go round and round. They they keep going uh, because here's in theory. Uh, if you have a team, okay. Like say you and I were a team. Okay. All right. So we we would flip a quarter. Who's going to start off? Okay. All right. Kushla. All right. So say you're starting. So you're going to drive five hours while I quote sleep. Okay. Then I'm going to drive five hours, and you're going to sleep. Okay. And then you're then I'm going to wake you, and then you're going to drive, and then I'm going to you know five on five off five Where on the, five off. You, me, Kushla, Kalen, right? Do they get a drive? They're on. So one's on your schedule, one's on my schedule. Okay. Okay. They get shotgun. Okay, I was just checking. And yeah, they don't get bunk time. They get shotgun. <sighs> they get bunk time with us though. Well, yeah, if, okay. if, if, if I'm in bunk, Kalen's the in bunk. The two of us are in the bunk. No, I'm saying if I'm in bunk, Kalen's in bunk. Yeah, and then. Because you know she's attached to And then to I, I need I need Kushla to be in the shotgun seat because she's the navigator. And if I don't have a navigator, I might get lost. Okay, I was just checking. Just saying. So anyway, so in theory, teams can make a lot more money because basically you're doing twice the amount of work. But you have to really like the person yes. you're a team you with. You have to really get along with them. I tried team driving once with Beeline. Okay. For one week with a guy that I was dating uh-huh. and that was living with me temporarily what? while he was apartment hunting. What? At the end of the week. How, how bad was that? <laughs> at the end of the week, all we did was like a Midwest run and back. Okay. Um, I kicked him out of my truck. I kicked Get him out, out of my house, and I kicked him out of my life. Get out. I packed his bags. Get out of the house. I'm like, goodbye. Adios, amigo. Hasta la vista, baby. Hasta la pasta. So one of the other big problems, and I don't know if you ran into um, detention or delay at customer facilities without getting paid. Yeah. I I, I used to deadhead. I hate and not deadheading. Get, and not get deadhead miles. Did they give you a certain amount after or pay you after so many miles? Um, yeah, I think I think it was after two hundred. Yeah, I don't remember it how was, many. It was miles, ridiculous. But, yeah. I, I, you know, if I deadheaded four hundred miles, I got paid for two hundred of it. See, and, and I, it wasn't, and it was like a stupid amount of money. It wasn't like 
like oh all right yeah no it was it was you are you fucking kidding me yeah see and i know that when i delivered in chicago if i delivered to the rail yards and i had to pick up in indianapolis at one facility i didn't get paid but if i went to the far side facility on the east side of indianapolis i got paid okay I don't remember the miles, but it was enough of a difference that I was like, seriously, they're both in Indianapolis and you're yeah, not paying me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I've I've picked up lumber out of out of Massachusetts mm-hmm. and hauled it to Ohio and then because they didn't like the price that they had to pay, they dickered the price down and then I had to eat it on the on the back end the following week. Oh, that stinks. Because they already paid me for the load. I was like, oh, oh, no, 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 no. It's, it's like, why are you taking money from me? Well, they, they argued the price. I said, well, that's not my problem. Yeah, you can you pay guys, for delivering, not sitting on a load. Yeah, I got paid to deliver the load. I delivered the load. So give me my money back. Yeah. You know, that. well, obviously, that's why I don't work for that company anymore. I know. You know, after you, after that happened, at least two, uh, that was the third time it happened. I said, no more. No more lumber um, loads. I refused. I refused lumber loads. I got you. Because they did it to me every time I hauled lumber out of that uh, out of that company. It was an easy, quick load. I mean, mm-hmm. if I was in a pinch and I just wanted to do a quick, uh, uh, one last quick load before my weekend off, it worked. Because I knew that I could get a pipe load out of Ohio and come across the top of Canada and, and c- come down into New York and go home. Okay. If I yeah. wanted to. Yeah. I never did. Only because I, I was afraid to cross the border. I, I went into Canada all the time. Oh, so did I. I always, I always ended up going in over the Ambassador Bridge. That nice. was that was a trip. Grooved Highway. <laughs> <laughs> Grooved Highway that swallowed your tires. Mm-hmm. Basically, put it in gear and just let go of the steering wheel because the grooves were so bad the truck would drive straight anyways <laughs> and if the truck if the grooves went off the bridge so would you but yeah. they didn't no nope, they didn't so anyway so ah the good old days another big uh problem that truck drivers face a huge problem okay is truck parking and we have talked about this so many times cuz it's not just truck parking let's be honest if you're traveling parking is parking an issue parking is an issue yeah we've you done know, a we're, podcast we're, about yeah, parking we did we we talked about different places to park that that you could park for free, or that if you talk to the management of the company, nine out of ten times they'll be like, "Yeah, sure, no problem," because you're not going to be there that long. You're only there just. To but get- not just that, truckers have problems parking at home. Oh, but yeah, like, they, they got to find a place to drop their trailer. They got to, you know. When my dad drove mm-hmm. out of here, when my mom was alive, and well, when they both were alive, when Anyways. Mesa. Mm-hmm. Um, when they first had the house on That's Mesa, Arizona, Mesa, Arizona on Kachina drive. Okay. When they first moved in, he could park his rig and trailer uh, on the street. Okay. And then a bunch of people moved in and they didn't like and him. They didn't like it. seeing that. Yeah. Nope. So then he had to park a couple miles down the road on a, on a lot. Mm-hmm. Then they moved on to 56th street and same thing. And then some people moved in, and he had to park down the road. And that's when he started parking next door to the Wendy's on the vacant lot that the Wendy's owned. Mm -hmm. And he knew the owner. And that's where I used to park. (laughs) Obvious reason. Uh When I lived in Scotia, I couldn't even bobtail my rig into my driveway for very long. I could bring it in, unload, and then leave. And I used to park at the trucking company around the corner. But Uh, even on a cold night, I couldn't go pre-start my truck. Because of the noise. Because of the noise. I couldn't pre-start it to load it. Yeah. Because I was doing that. I did it one time, and they came in, and they said, your truck's been running for an hour. I said, I'm warming it up while I'm loading it. You can't park here anymore. What? Seriously, you can't park here anymore because it's been running for 45 minutes. See, my neighbors. So then I ended up parking it down at the industrial park. See, now my neighbors decided that it was better that I ran the truck in the wintertime. Mm-hmm. Than to have a tow truck come over at two in the morning and run a generator to to dethaw my truck. I don't know what to tell so, you. So we came to the understanding that hey, look, it's in the driveway. Uh, it's it's in the driveway. It's plugged in, and if you let me run it, 
it won't I won't have to have the tow truck guy here blaring his because nobody gets any sleep then. Yeah. And well, that's the, like six house radius. Oh yeah. <laughs> well the funny thing was is this was a trucking company with semis. I know. He I, allowed them to plug in. I said, I will pay you to let me plug my truck in. He refused. Yeah, see that's that's I'm like stupid. I'm home for, for thirty six, forty eight hours. I can't plug my truck in. I can't pre-start it. What yeah. am I? I can't come over and start it once a day yeah, right. and leave it run for an hour or two. Yeah. What am I supposed to do? He says, I don't care, which was fine in the summer. Boy, when that deep freeze hit, though. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like I had a deep freeze and I, my truck froze. Yeah. Because I couldn't run Thank it. goodness that the industrial park, they were super nice and I could park my truck there and I could park my um, Ford Escape there. When I was Your escape, yeah, my escape. I could park it there when I was on the road. I uh-huh. could leave it there, and the guys watched it for me. They'd call me if anyone bugged it. I'd be like, just call the cops. Hey, security. So, so, so we did do an episode on truck parking. Yep. And uh, and like I said, we've talked about parking RVs, trucks, cars, everything when you're traveling. We talk about it a lot because it's an issue. If you travel, parking is an issue. Because we're here to help truckers and travelers in their pursuit of health, happiness, and a better life behind the wheel. Including parking. Yeah. And that does include parking. Yes. So so I think uh, I think uh, we might want to wrap this one up. Well, I just wanted to, on to mention a few things, not going to detail, just a few things that truckers face that are specific to their everyday lives. Yeah. Oh, we could do that. They're under pressure to make deliveries. Not of course. from their boss and from the place they're delivering to. Anybody they, any, anybody that drives they for, don't, for a, a, a logistics company. Sorry. Correct. They don't care. The place you're delivering to doesn't care if there's bad weather. Nope. You had a breakdown. None of that. They'll they just don't. refuse the delivery until you take it back. But they, they want their shit when they go on it. Okay. Distractions while driving. There's... With way trucks being automatic and having all these sensors now, way, 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 too, way many too many distractions. And people do. They'll spend so much time on their phone, they'll be like, ooh. And I, I talk to one, and I'm like, what happened? Oh, thank God my truck has the thing that puts it back in the lane because I wasn't paying enough attention. I'm like, hang up the fucking phone. Yeah, get up. Get off the goddamn phone. So if you're driving need- a big rig, you shouldn't be on the phone. You it's one thing attention. To, it's one thing to answer the phone, but if you're so much attention on the phone, yeah, that you're swerving, you uh, shouldn't be on the yeah. phone. Poor maintenance. Poor maintenance. You just got to find a good company, and it's up to the driver, just like an <gasps> RV driver. You what? have to check your vehicle regularly. Check. Open the hood. Check everything. Look at belts. Check. Look at lights. Look at tires. Look at oil, fuel, everything. If you're not paying attention, how do you expect the company to? I know, right? They can't fix it. If they, if they don't know it's broke, they can't fix it. Gotta um, let them know it's broke. Dude. Being away from home, we talked about that. Yep. Being lonely. Oh, don't be lonely. Irregular schedules. Truckers have irregular schedules. That's if you gimme. have a problem with your schedule and you drive a truck, you're in the wrong industry. Yeah. If you're because, so be- concentrating on... I need to be home with my family. I miss my boyfriend. I miss my girlfriend. Too bad, so sad. Then I wanted out to go out industry. and party with my friends. You're you, in the wrong you industry. You can't. You got a CDL. You can't party with your friends. Because if you go out and party and then get in that truck the next day and you get pulled over and you blow over a, a point oh eight, It's you're lower. Done. Than, I think it's a point oh four. Is that an 04 it's now? It's an 04 for a truck driver. It has been for a while. Has it been? Yeah. Maybe maybe, maybe I'm thinking. I know when I was, at one point, it was a .08. It's, I'm like, it was .04 for a while for a hey, truck driver. That's not even a full beer. Yeah, you can't drink a beer. You can't drink a beer in a truck stop parking lot and drive the next morning. Nope. So You can't have alcohol in, in, your truck. in the truck. Yeah. I you know, will be ticketed and fine. I know someone used to drink a six-pack of beer every night in their truck, but anyway. Anywho. So health is another issue truck drivers have. Drive long hours, sit a lot. The key is get up every what? chance you got and get out of that truck and walk around the truck and keep active. Yeah, keep moving. Keep moving. I know people that do, and people with dogs, not cats, dogs. Dogs tend to move more out of their trucks than dogs. people without them because they have to take the dog for a walk. Well, yeah. 
that's the whole point. You got to get out, move around. Well, plus let it keeps the little, you from, let keeps the little you, one do its business. It keeps you from being or the lonely big dog, too. Whichever. Well, yeah. Yeah, the the couple I saw with the seven basset hounds. Oh, I don't even. Yeah, care. I don't fathom that. Too one. much. And of course, like we talked about, all the regulations you got to keep yeah. track of. If you work for, if you're a company driver, keep in touch with your dispatcher, your manager, whoever is in charge of you that you report to, ask them to keep you in touch with new uh, regulations, new company rules, anything that affects you and your hours. Yeah, because they, they're always evolving. Yeah, and life can be challenging as a truck driver. It can be. But it can be very rewarding, too. I was lucky. I found it very rewarding. Yeah, I I did, too. I, I, I shouldn't I shouldn't say that I, I I didn't like it or I or I disliked it. I had ups and downs. You I had like, I had more ups than downs in New York, especially. You know, but for the most part, I enjoyed yes. what I did. You can enjoy your job and not your boss. Yeah, you can enjoy your company and not your boss. Yeah, if uh, your boss yeah. sucks, sometimes. Eh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So anyway, I'm not gonna say anything because they might listen to the show. Oh, I don't care if they do. So anyway, anywho, that's all I wanted to point out was for every problem, there's a solution. This is this is true. You just have to find the solution. And if you the happy medium, yeah. And if you are a truck driver or want to be a truck driver, you know, truck driver in the wrong job, pay attention when you're looking. If you want to be a truck driver, pay attention when you're looking. Exactly. It's out there. You just gotta you gotta know what you want, and ask the right questions. And in the really know what you want. You know, hey, how much am I? A, how much am I getting paid? How how much vacation? What are the health benefits? What's the cost? What's the? What do I have to pay for myself? Yeah, you need to you need to know these questions. The you need to get the answer to the questions that you want to know. And the only dumb question is the one you don't ask. And asking them a month after you were hired. That's Doesn't do you any good because when you job jump, it looks really bad on too you. Too bad, so sad. The Three gra- months here and six this, months there. The, this, go ahead and say it. This is the color of the grass. If, grass is not greener. If if you don't find that you like the color of the grass, you should have stayed where the hell you were. Mm-hmm. Anywho. Anywho. We, that's we, it. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed the show today. And if you're going to get into truck driving, we wish you the best. Very, very best, best of luck. Because trust me, you can make a lucrative living. And I I I got lucky. I I was able to make enough money to make sure the bills were paid and be home with my family. So you have to decide as to your priorities. How, how what and when you want to you what yeah, you got to get your priorities well, straight. If you're my single, pri- over the road is great. And my priority when I was over the road was the ability to travel and see my family in different states. Yep. And I was able to. I was able to tell my dispatcher, these are the states and cities my family lives in. I prefer loads there. Yep. Or that go through there where I can take my 34 off. And I saw my family exactly. regularly. Exactly. You know, I mean, if you're with somebody and you don't have kids, get in it as a team. Yeah. Especially if you get along. Yeah, especially if you get along. If you don't get along, well, <laughs> yeah, I, home. Wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. Because it could be stressful. Yeah, you might end up kicking them out so, at the end of a week. Well, I don't know if you'd do that. I did. I, well, I don't know if you'd do that with me. Not you. Oh, okay. I would not kick you out. <sighs> you're I'd be like, pu- you're, I'd be like you're losing all this, baby. <laughs> Kushla and Kalen would never forget. Uh, they me. would not. They would go on strike. They would. They would be. They would be skin, skin and, and bones. bones. Where's my dad? I miss my daddy. You mean they're not skin and bones now? We got fat rats. Say what? You heard me. Roly polies. They look like potatoes. All right, on that note. Well, Frankie looks like a potato. (laughs) There is a dark purple potato Kushla kind of looks like. Uh Uh-huh. Anyways. We We hope hope you enjoyed the show. We hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, Please like comment share it with a friend if you're on youtube ring our bell just just you get the word out bell. let them know about the show and uh, and if you can leave us a review 
on your favorite podcast player of choice, please do. We appreciate because, it. Because it does help out the show. I know. We forgot. What? Easter eggs. What about Easter? Oh, don't forget to look for, you know, read our descriptions because. Easter eggs. You know, we, we want to thank our, our recent winner for reading our description. And getting the Easter egg out of and it. And finding the little nugget of information that was there. Your prize is in the mail. Whoop, Just whoop. so you know. You never know what we're going to give. It could be a t-shirt. Might be a sticker. Could be a, a gift, gift, card. gift card to Amazon. Might be just like a gift card in general. Could be a mug. Could it, be anything. It could be. It could be whatever. 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 You just have to find it and in the description. Have- and then you have to let us know that you found it. And we have to have your name and address to mail you things. Yeah. You would just email me. With that information. Patrick at 18 wheeltalkcom And let him know where, and where you found it and what it was. Exactly. Tell us exactly where you found it. And mm-hmm. you send me an email. And mm-hmm. you can put it in the subject line. Easter egg. You know, whatever, whatever just gets my attention. That you read the description. You could put attention, Patrick. So, hey, I found the egg. What, what? That's right. Give me my prize. Because after all, this is our three-year anniversary. I know it's been, it's, 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 wow, it's been three years already. And a couple months. It's just like blink and it's. Three years, two months. Almost three months. It's been three, this is our third anniversary. We it, it, we turned three in August, and we're celebrating all year long. Mm-hmm. So we're putting little little nuggets in our descriptions. Once it's found, I, I eliminate it from the description. So you can't go back to our past episodes and find it. But the next one you can. You could always be in touch on the next episode. You never know. Nope. You could be the next winner. True. And it's first come, first serve. So... You Here today, get gone tomorrow. Yeah, you get in, you get it in. If you're the first one, one and done. Mm-hmm. So if I got a thousand dollars cash on the line, guess what? Janice going broke. No, I'm just saying. If, if say for oh. instance, the prize <laughs> for that episode is a thousand dollars cash, first person gets it. True. You know, I I'm not gonna wait. You know, until we get like 400 people that say, I found the nugget. And, and then give pick my, one. No, it's the first come, first first, serve. first one in wins it, and then it's gone off the description. True. So if you can't find a nugget in a description that, that we got out, guess what? Somebody's already got it. You snooze, you lose. Or I forgot to put it in. <laughs> one or the other. <laughs> I remind you. So anyways, we hope you enjoyed the show. Thank like, you, thank you. share, leave a comment. And we'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Okay, bye-bye. 18 Wheel Talk. Thank you for joining us today. We greatly appreciate it. Be sure to stop by 18wheeltalk.com and check out all the affiliates mentioned in the program today. Remember, we're here coaching generations of drivers while guiding them on their path to success. We'll catch you on the flip side. Spark the revolution. revolution. So tell me, do you have one of those change buckets in your vehicle for fancy cafes? Yeah. And are you looking for a way to help support the show and just don't know how? Well, we have great news for you. It is super easy and you can do it for as little as $3 a month. Yes, that's right. $3 a month. That means for the cost of a cup of coffee, you could support the show for a month. And if you order one of those foo-foo frappy thingamabobs with all those flavors and whipped cream and sprinkles on top, you could support the show for about six months. Isn't that amazing? Saving you calories from that frappy thingamabob with all those flavors and whipped cream and sprinkled things on top and help out the show. (laughs) What's not to like about that? So to do so, just go to 18wheeltalk.com slash support and you will see just how easy it is to support the show. And don't forget to pick out your fan emoji while you're there. That's 18wheeltalk.com slash support.